Today we're talking about solving multi-step linear equations. And I want to be really clear about the type of linear equations we're solving. These are all going to have one variable and one variable only with no exponents involved. We've already been through one and two step linear equations, so this is a continuation of our last video. And to make this a little simpler, I've broken this down into the five steps that it takes to solve any linear equation that comes your way. Not every equation will require all five steps, but knowing these five steps will help you greatly. In the future, you're going to be given different types of math equations to solve, like exponential or quadratic equations, and they'll require something completely different. But for today, let's go through the five steps to solving linear equations. The first thing to look for is, is there any distribution that needs to be done? Distribution, of course, comes when you have to multiply a term through a set of parentheses. So if there's any parentheses in your equation, most likely there's some distribution to be done. Step number two deals with combining like terms. A lot of students misinterpret this step. They think that every like term throughout the entire equation can be combined. And that's not the case. This step requires that we isolate the left side of the equation from the right side. The dividing line between the two will be the equal sign. So in essence, we're looking for like terms to the left of the equal sign that can be combined, and separately looking for like terms on the right side of the equal sign that can be combined. Step three deals with getting all our variables to one side of the equation. If you have a variable both to the left and to the right of the equal sign, we're not going to be able to solve that equation. So we need to get all variables together. We do that by adding or subtracting one of the variables from both sides of the equation to combine it all into one term. The next step does the same thing with constants. We need to get all our constants together. The key is on this step, however, I want my constants to be on the opposite side from my variables. So if I took all the variables to the left hand side of the equal sign, I want my constants on the right side of the equal sign. As long as they're on opposite sides, we're going to be good. And step five has to do with our coefficient. Our coefficient, remember, is a number that's being multiplied to a variable. And how do we undo multiplication? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division, of course. So our last step in solving any linear equation is to divide by a coefficient. Just a quick FYI, sometimes you'll have coefficients that are fractions. And dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So fraction coefficients can be a little tricky. Last but not least, even though it's not one of our official five steps, I highly recommend that you always, always, always go back and check your solution by using substitution. You can save yourself a lot of time, you can save yourself a lot of effort, if you'll simply go back and check to see that your solution is correct. And I'll show you how that's done in just a minute. We're going to go through a few examples today, and we're going to start off with the equation 9x equals x plus 16. Going through our five steps, step number one says, look for any distribution. In other words, are there any parentheses in this equation? Since the answer is no, I can skip that step and move on. Step two says to combine like terms. 
So again, I'm going to look at just the terms to the left of the equal sign. Since there's only one term there, there's nothing that can be combined. And then separately, I'm going to look to the right hand side of the equal sign. Since x and 16 are not like terms, I can skip step two and move on. Step three says I need my variables to all be on one side of the equal sign. Since I have a 9x to the left and a 1x to the right, I can't have variables on both sides of my equal sign. So remember we either need to get rid of the 9x or we need to get rid of the x. In the end, it's not going to matter which one you choose. But for those who struggle, I'm going to recommend that you get rid of the one on the right. To do that, I need to subtract x from both sides of my equation. That's going to eliminate the x to the right hand of my equal sign. And on the left, 9x, take away one of those x's, leaves me with 8x. On the right hand side, I still have that positive 16 and I end up with 8x equals 16. I don't have constants on both sides of my equal sign, so I can skip step four and I need to go on to step five, which is to get rid or eliminate my coefficient. Since eight is being multiplied to x, I need to do the opposite and divide by eight. Multiplying by eight and dividing by eight are opposite functions, inverse functions, and they're going to basically undo each other. Eight over eight is one, and one x is the same as just writing regular old x. On the other side, 16 divided by eight is two, and I end up with x equals two. I have my solution, but I want to go back, or I need to go back, and verify that my answer is correct. Since people are pretty prone to making mistakes, this is a hugely important part of our process. We check our solution to equations by using substitution. Since x is equal to 2, that means in my original equation I can go back and put a 2 everywhere I used to have an x. So 9 times x equals x plus 16 becomes 9 times 2 equals 2 plus 16. 9 times 2 is 18. And on the other side, 2 plus 16 is 18. Since 18 equals 18, I know that my answer is correct. I know that I don't have to go back and fix anything, and I'm ready to move on to the next problem. Our next equation, 4y minus 70 equals 12y plus 2, is solved the same way. Is there any distribution that needs to be done? No. Are there any like terms to the left hand side of the equal sign? Or to the right hand side of the equal sign? The answer is no, no there as well, so we move on to let's get all our variables to the same side. Since I have a 4y to the left and a 12y to the right, I need to subtract one of those terms. I'm going to choose to subtract 12y from both sides of my equation. To the right, 12y minus 12y equals 0, and they're going to be eliminated. On the left-hand side, if I have 4y's and I'm taking away 12 of those y's, I end up with negative 8y. I still have the negative 70 or the minus 70 that we haven't done anything with. And on the right, I still have a positive 2. So I end up with the equation negative 8y minus 70 equals 2. Step 4 says I need my constants to all be on the same side. Since my variables on the left, I want all my constants to the right, so I need to get rid of this minus 70. I do that by 
adding 70. Minus 70 plus 70 is going to equal 0 and they're going to be out of the picture. I have negative 8y equals 72. Last step is to divide by our coefficient. Remember we don't change the sign on our coefficient, just the operation. So when I divide both sides by negative 8, my negative 8's eliminate and I have y equals negative 9. So far so good, that's our solution. However, we need to make sure that it's right. Remember we always go back and use substitution in our original equation to verify. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. 12 times negative 9 is negative 108. When I do the addition and subtraction on both sides, I get negative 106 equals negative 106. Since both sides are the same, I know my answer was correct and I know I don't need to go back and change anything. Next equation. Are there any or is there any distribution that needs to be done? Well, since this time we have a set of parentheses, the answer is definitely yes. We need to take the 5 outside the parentheses and multiply it to every term inside the parentheses. 5 times p and 5 times 6 gives me 5p plus 30 equals 8p. I don't have any like terms on the left and I don't have any like terms on the right so I can skip step two. Step three though says I need to have all my variables on one side of the equation. Since 5p is to the left and 8p is to the right, I need to get rid of one of those terms. I'm going to subtract 8p from both sides so that the variable on the right is eliminated. Next I have to have my constants all to one side since my variables on the left I want all my constants on the right so I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides of the equation. 30 minus 30 equals 0 and my 30's are gone. I get negative 3p and 0 minus 30 gives me a negative 30 on the right hand side. Last but not least, we divide by our coefficient. Negative 30 divided by negative 3 means p is equal to 10. There's my solution, but now I need to check and make sure that it's correct. Again, we're going to do this by substituting 10 back into our original equation. Parentheses comes first. So I get 5 times 16 on the left hand side. 8 times 10 on the right hand side gives me 80. And 5 times 16, well, that's 80 as well. That verifies that p equals 10 is our solution and we're ready to move on. Last example. A lot of students get really intimidated when they see an equation like this and they want to back off and just give up. But those five steps make it very, very simple to solve this equation even though it looks very complicated. First step, is there any distribution that needs to be done? Of course, since there's parentheses, there's distribution. So first things first, let's multiply that 2 through our set of parentheses. 2 times 3x gives us 6x. 2 times negative 4 gives us negative 8. And the rest of the equation stays the same. Step 2 says we've got to look for like terms. Do I have any like terms on the left hand side of my equation? You bet, we have a 6x and a 5x. How about to the right hand side of our equation? The 2x and the x. So on each side, 
we're going to combine those like terms. I have 11 X's minus eight on the left hand side and three X plus 16 on the right. Now we're ready to go on to our next step, which is getting all our variables to one side. I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides and I get eight X minus eight equals positive 16. Next are constants. We need to get rid of the one on the left since our variable's already there. When I add eight to both sides of my equation, I get eight X equals 24. And finally, when we divide by our coefficient, we get X equals three. Three is our solution, but what comes next? You bet, we've gotta go back and check our answer. We've got to, according to order of operations, check what's in the parentheses first. Three times three is nine. Nine minus four gives us five. So here I have a two times five, five times three, and a two times three that all need to be multiplied. Adding both sides of my equation together, I see that 25 is equal to 25. If those numbers did not match, I know that I had made a mistake and I'd have to go back and try the problem again. But since they do match, I know my answer is correct and I'm done with this equation. X equals three is my solution. A quick note, as you get further into solving equations, do not be alarmed if you get answers that are fractions or decimals. There are many equations that will not have so-called perfect answers. Perfect whole number answers are not the norm. So remember just to check all of your answers using substitution and then you can be sure that all of your answers are correct, whatever they might be. I wish you good luck. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.